Okay guys, welcome back to another blockchain news video. We're coming off the weekend and we actually saw Bitcoin hit 10K over the weekend here. We just came off of that and we came right under at 9,973 currently at a negative 1.6% percent so we got a little bit of a pullback in the market and i think that's expected but that big 10k number was definitely broken over the weekend and that is great news right now we have ethereum at 223 we have xrp at 27 cents bitcoin cash 443 bitcoin sv at 342 the pullback here with bitcoin sv is about six percent uh bitcoin cash pulling back about three percent and XRP right around the same level. So uh, moving on to Coin360 for the rest of the market. We currently have uh, red market right now. We have Bitcoin showing at that near negative 2% pullback around that 9,960 level. Ethereum uh, at around 223, like I mentioned. And the rest of the market is looking uh, kind of red. We have EOS right under $5 at 4.87. But we do have some other players that are in the green. So we have BNB currently in the green right now at a 5.8% uh, recovery or uh, move upwards. Currently at $24.67, XTZ up 10%. So we do have some in the top 100 that definitely did move up. And congratulations to everybody that did make some gains here coming off the weekend. So moving on to the news, we have Paystand raises $20 million to be blockchain-based Venmo for commercial payments. So Paystand is a platform using blockchain tech that's going to be automating commercial payments. And it's raised about $20 million in Series B funding. So we're going to have a blockchain based Venmo kind of app. It's going to be pretty cool. The payments and transactions are supposed to be pretty easy and fast uh, for enterprises as Venmo has done for basic consumer to consumer transactions. So that's going to be pretty interesting. They're going to be handling business payments. Uh, they want to have real time fund verifications taking place with their payments. And that's why they are pretty confident they're going to be moving into this space. So. Pence, uh, pay stands is going to be business to business payment service uh, and it's saying that it could save businesses on average about more than 50 percent of the cost of realizing receivables and reduce day sales outstanding by more than 60 percent so this is going to be interesting to see uh, i want to hear more about pay stand as we move forward next up we have bch merchant directories now list 4,300 bitcoin cash accepting businesses so it seems like bch is really making the rounds here right around the world we have a world map showing different locations here on the screen guys we have a lot of locations coming off of the um uh, southeast we have a lot on the eastern coast of the world and it seems like africa has plenty of locations that have a lot of bitcoin cash physical locations where you can spend your bch at a merchant store so that's pretty cool it's showing that there's about 1894 brick and mortar brick and mortar bch merchants and uh, right now we saw 53 new ones added over the last week. So that's pretty cool here for BCH. Um, and there's around 4,392 merchants as a whole that are accepting Bitcoin cash. So that's pretty cool. Here we see that Slovenia has the most ac that accepts uh, physical locations for BCH worldwide. After that, we see locations like Australia is pretty dense also within the upper region of North uh, Queensland. And we are definitely seeing how BCH is just moving across the entire map. You know, you have Turkey over here, Romania, Ukraine, just a lot of different locations. So uh, that's pretty good. We see also that Japan has around 90 merchants. So pretty good news here for BCH as it continues to get more adoption around the world. Uh, next up, we have Wise Ratings upgrades Bitcoin to A- minus ahead of halving. So. Um, the American provider of investment data, Wise Ratings, is ranking Bitcoin as excellent by assigning a A minus grade. So now that Bitcoin has a higher grade here uh, than both assets, XRP standing at B minus and EOS at C after a downgrade for centralization. Even though we do see China's state backed tech work group, the Center for Information and Industry Development, they are ranking EOS on top with Tron second, Ethereum next, XRP is actually ranked 20th. But the big takeaway here, guys, is that we know that Bitcoin is going to have its halving. 
It's going to be dropping from 12.5 Bitcoins that are going to get mined every block to 6.25 Bitcoin. So that's probably what's uh, obviously causing this rally in price, but also getting a lot of attention here from organizations like uh, Wise Rating. So moving forward, we have coronavirus transmission confirmed via aerosol. So that basically means that it is uh, airborne and it can be transmitted uh, over the air. So if you are as close as 40 inches from somebody else or 20 inches above from a patient's oral cavity, uh, the you can get infected, you know, by breathing it in. So it actually can remain in the air for about 20 minutes without dying off. So that's how intense the coronavirus is. So I figured I'd let you guys know uh, on that information. So moving forward, we do have scarcity. There's only one Bitcoin for every 333 people around the world, guys. So that's uh, pretty mind blowing to think that if everybody wanted to get one single Bitcoin, there wouldn't be enough for them. And just only one person out of 333 could technically have one full Bitcoin. And as it stands right now, that would put uh, for every person to actually hold Bitcoin, that would have to be a amount of 0 0.003 Bitcoin per person. So as of February 20, uh, 20 we have over 7.7 .7 billion people on Earth. And so for each one of them to hold a little bit of Bitcoin, they could only hold up to 0 0.003 if it was divided evenly. And just to put things into perspective for you guys, those that are lucky enough to know about this information, to know about Bitcoin pretty early on, we have 23 million entities are holding the largest crypto, which is 0.3% of the total world population. Even more, less than a million people own one Bitcoin, guys. So if you are one of those million that owns one whole Bitcoin, congratulations to you. If you are even at 0.5 Bitcoin, congratulations to you too. If you're even at 0.1 Bitcoin, congratulations. You know, you are in that top level because there's in the future as we continue to, to go, guys, and uh, scarcity becomes more of an issue for um, Bitcoin, the price is going to continue to move up accordingly. And we're going to see people trying to get a little bit of Bitcoin and it's going to be near impossible. So congratulations to those that are in this space right now. Next up, we have Mysterious Binance Cloud launching in 10 days. Uh, CEO CZ is hinting at that. So they um, were they were going to unveil a little bit more about their product for Binance Cloud uh, during their recent uh, Twitter AMA. But they just stated that it's coming. They didn't ex exactly explain what it was. And right now they're actually advertising a senior cloud cloud engineer position for their new cloud engineering architecture team. So uh, position describes large scale, massive parallel and highly available computer systems on the advanced cloud computing platform. So pretty much is some, somebody that knows what they're doing when it comes to scaling uh, cloud uh, systems. Right. So right now we don't have a lot of information, but he did um, explain that that's coming. And so we can look forward to more information in the future and just want to keep you guys in the know. Uh, BNB futures with 50 X leverage is actually launching on February 10th. So keep that on your calendars, guys. Uh, expect that to continue to move BNB's price upwards. And that's probably why we're seeing BNB in the green today. Uh, Binance is just constantly adding stuff for their uh, coins. So that's really good news. And they're also expecting fiat gateways for currencies like the Russian rubble, uh, Norwegian Krone and Croatian Kuna. So that's going to be very, very good news for Binance. Next up, we have Neogen partners with Ripe.io to assess blockchain for food safety and animal genomics. So this uh, article is related more towards just um, leveraging the blockchain tech within food safety and animals. But the cool thing was that I read in this article was that now we should be able to track everything from the beginning of the life of that specific animal that's connected to perhaps the milk that you are going to be drinking. Um, so that's actually pretty cool because then we can see exactly what that animal is being fed, how it's being treated and how that effect might have on milk. And that is only really possible through blockchain, right? Because 
Um, if it was outside of blockchain, it could be pretty costly to keep that data or it couldn't be trusted. So I figured I'd let you guys know this industry continues to grow. There's just so much uh, opportunity within the food industry, and it is expected to grow or save up to $31 billion by 2024. So that's why you see a lot of big companies trying to leverage blockchain to bring this forward. And I think this is great for consumers. I think this is also going to be good for animals, right? When they're uh, how they're being treated, we I'm pretty sure it, that all adds up to the amount or uh, the quality of the product that these animals produce, like cows with milk and whatnot. So uh, next up, we have a report. Bitcoin price should reach 15K after halving if it is to remain profitable for miners. So um, it was taken into account just how much the Bitcoin uh, mining difficulty went up in the past three months. And if we were to continue in that same kind of increase, uh, during the next three months after the Bitcoin halving, we should be seeing Bitcoin trading at at least $15,000, guys, for it to remain profitable for miners. And that's kind of the level that we want to keep in mind. Um, what you can expect after the Bitcoin halving in regards to price, you know, it's obviously uh, to be speculated on. But right now, we should be expecting that 12000 525 to about 15k i would lean over on the 15k side because we are going to be seeing probably new miners getting involved so uh interesting to see that and to just expect that number here after the halving uh, next up we have german banks are requesting to custody bitcoin ethereum and xrp so there seems to be a lot of demand from uh, companies and banks within the Germ german government and right now, the new Money Laundering Act is permitting banks to actually hold digital assets like Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP. So this is coming after uh, regulations are, have been uh, changed and accommodate to accommodate the European Union's uh, fifth anti-money laundering directive, which you know requires crypto-related companies to ensure that operations comply with that KYC and AML process that all governments are passionate about. But the biggest thing here to highlight is that there's demand and big digital assets like the top three coins are uh, in the radar of banks from Germany. So that's very good news. Um, as we move forward, they're stating that the market is growing faster than the Federal Ministry of Finance had predicted. That is both a blessing and a curse. The high demand for crypto custody licenses show that companies are increasingly adopting blockchain tech. And this is a result of the new legislation. So that new legislation brings back legitimacy, which is what we were waiting for um, for a quite quite a couple of years. And we finally got that here in 2020. The Europeans are leading the movement with their uh, regulation, and we're hoping and expecting that the U.S. will follow uh, suit shortly after. Of course, we have China and we have other big countries that are also in the space moving pretty quickly when it comes to uh, legislature and regulatory guidance. Uh, last up for today, we have Litecoin developer revealing privacy breakthrough. So they're going to be eliminating major hurdles uh, in confidential transactions. Right now, Litecoin is leveraging the Mimble Wimble privacy tech. And their uh, major developer, David Burkay, uh, has found a new method to transfer LTC without having to have the sender and the receiver in contact. Um, throughout the process so it seems like they needed to communicate or they actually do need to communicate for the receiver to be able to receive um, the litecoin privately but in his new uh, proposal he's going to be uh, he's going to be implementing a new uh, rule that is going to enforce the transactions to be validated without having to have the sender and the receiver to be online on the network so and that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Hopefully it works out pretty well, right? We know that Litecoin is uh, usually being tested ahead of Bitcoin. So if it kind of works on Litecoin, it should theoretically work on Bitcoin. And I mean, privacy, guys, that's something we definitely want, especially being in this space. So we want to keep that big brother um, shadow off of us. 
So that's going to be it from me today, guys. If you can go ahead and leave a like down below on the video, also leave a comment so we can keep the conversation going. And don't forget to sub to the channel so you can get more crypto and blockchain news on the daily. So I'll be seeing you guys on the next one.